Hi, in this video we're going to introduce the concept of net present value. Net present value is the most powerful financial tool that we have and it's the one we're going to use the most often. Basically anytime we're looking to see what something is worth, whether or not we want to invest in a stock or a bond, whether or not we want to make a loan or buy a house, we're going to use the concept of net present value. Because what it tells us is it tells us whether or not an investment is going to increase or decrease our wealth overall compared to our next best alternative. So the net present value is calculated by taking the present value of future cash flows minus an initial investment. And so it measures, comparison to something else, the increase or decrease in wealth that we get by making a specific investment. So let's look at an example. Let's say that you've got $5,000 that you'd like to invest. You've got three options. The first option is saving your money in the bank, right? That's the no-brainer. That's what you do. You've got some money, you save it. You put it in the bank, you're not going to spend it. However, a friend of yours says, you know, if you're not going to use that, I'd like to borrow it. And if I can borrow your $5,000 now, I'll pay you $750 per year at the end of the year for each of the next eight years. And then your Uncle Joe says, well, I'd like to borrow $5,000 too if you're loaning it out. So I can't pay you $750 per year because I'm not going to have it right away. But I'll give you these cash flows. I'll start with $600 and I'll go up $75 per year till the end of the eighth year. And you're saying, wait a minute, I don't know what to do, right? It's not enough to add these numbers up because you're not taking into account the time value of money, right? That $1,000 in eight years is not the same as $1,000 today because you could earn 5% on your money and it's, it's not the same, right? It's going to be worth less to you today because you could invest much less to have $1,000 in the future. So we want to figure out the present value of these future cash flows. And then we say to ourselves, we're not going to, that we can't count that whole present value because we've got to give something up to get it. So we're going to take the present value of those future cash flows and then we're going to say, well, I had to give up $5,000 to get it. I'm going to subtract my initial investment. And that's going to be how much better off or worse off we are by making these loans. So let's look at it. The present value of something today is always equal to the cash sum. This $5,000 today that we loan to somebody else is $5,000. So that's going to be equal in both of our examples. If we have to loan $5,000 out, we've got to loan it out. When we loan it out to somebody else, we can't use it, so we represent it as a negative number. The present value of each of these alternatives, or I'm sorry, each of these cash inflows is equal to the dollar value of the cash inflow divided by 1 plus my interest rate. I can double click that box in the right corner. I made a mistake. Ah, what did I do? You probably even noticed. I didn't add my exponent. There we go. That looks better. So the present value of all these cash flows can be shown in this column in column C. If we look at investment two and do the same thing, we can say that the present value of our cash flow is equal to the dollar value of that cash flow divided by one plus our interest rate. We give our interest rate an absolute value and we raise it to the exponent of the number of years. We right click in that corner and we have our present values of the entirety of this loan cash flow over here in column G. So we can calculate our net present value by saying, okay, my net present value is equal to the present value of all of these cash flows, right, which are listed here in column C, minus our initial investment. Our initial investment is entered as a negative number, so we can just add it all up. It's equal to the sum of all of these cash flows. Eight positive cash flows and one negative cash flow. Our net present value seems to be negative. Let's double check our work using Excel's NPV function. With our NPV function, we need to remember that NPV in Excel's terms is not the same as NPV that we're introducing here. NPV for Excel is just present value of a series of cash flows. And since our cash flow that we're going to have today, that 
loaning of that $5,000 is happening today, we need to add it separately because we don't want to discount it at all. So we say that finding the net present value using the NPV function, we've got to say that it's equal to whatever cash flow is happening today plus the NPV of the future cash flows because those we're going to be happy to discount. We need to know the discounted value of those. Negative $153. What that means is that in comparison to investing money at 5%, that's our opportunity cost that we're using as a discount rate, loaning money to our friend is going to yield $153 less in today's terms. Let's evaluate investment number two. We can start by summing our net present values, or I'm sorry, we can start by summing the present values. because that initial investment is entered as a negative number. That allows us to calculate that it's the present value of our future cash flows minus our initial investment. We can also use the NPV function To get the same answer. All right, so this introduces us to our NPV decision criteria. You want to undertake an investment if and only if your net present value is greater than zero. Because if your net present value is greater than zero, that means that the investment that you're looking at making is going to be better for you than your opportunity, than your other opportunity meaning that a positive NPV says that making an investment is better than putting your money in the bank. It'll earn you more money. It'll have a higher yield. A negative NPV tells you that putting your money in the bank is going to be better for you than making the investment. If you're in a situation with two positive NPVs, you take the one with the higher NPV. So in this example, we see that if you had $5,000 right now and you were looking between investing it in the bank making a loan to your friend, or making a loan to your uncle, you would want to take the opportunity to make a loan to your uncle because it is going to have the highest yield. It has a net present value of $451, and that basically says that by making that loan, instead of putting your money in the bank, it's going to increase your wealth by $451 in present day terms.